How y'all doing? Morning, morning. Want to go ahead and drop another edition of A1 Forever Sports on to you. Um, today, we'll be covering the results of last night's playoff games, uh, covering some stats. No videos today, no videos. Um, still working a few things out on that, but um, still just wanted to give you guys, you know, some of my thoughts and reactions on the playoff games from last night. Um, going to start with the Miami Heat and Philadelphia 76ers game here. And um, the Miami Heat, they came out with a closeout mentality. Um, they won three out of the four quarters as far as like points and also won the total rebound battle 49 to 35. Um, now, the Sixers did win the points off turnover battle, but they still got pushed around in the paint by giving up 62 points. You know, um, early in the game, I uh, just want to spotlight this, that uh, Danny Green went down with a pair of leg or knee injury. Uh, definitely wish the best, kind of still looking for uh, – pretty much um, details and everything about what's going to happen. I'm pretty sure he has to do MRIs and all that good stuff like that. So I'm um, really hoping that uh, Danny Green is all right. That real ugly when uh, Embiid rolled up on his leg. And so that's a big loss. I mean, Danny Green is not the Danny Green he used to be, okay? He's not. But he's still a solid um defender you know what I'm saying in some, in some cases and I mean you know he still can shoot the ball I feel like his shooting has gone down a little bit over the years but I mean he is getting older um but definitely um big loss for um, for the for the Sixers and I hope um he'd be able to make a speedy recovery in the offseason but um Okay, a few personal stats from the game. Tyrese Maxey, really like Tyrese. Uh, been following him since Kentucky. And he's really starting to get more playing time. And I absolutely like that. I feel like they should have gave him more playing time, actually, when uh, the Sixers played the Hawks last year. Mm -hmm. Actually, that was just my personal. But I already know, you know, you kind of got to wait in line, wait your turn, follow the follow the court and all the stuff like that but I really expect Tyrese Maxey to take another step uh next year you know I'm saying going up I definitely believe that is his starting point guard job to lose I mean I know they got Harden over there but really you know Maxey can be the point guard or if y'all just want to keep it in Harden's hands that's on you uh definitely has to be some adjustments made to the Sixers in the offseason though Speaking of James Harden, he gave you 11 points and nine assists in pretty much an elimination game at home. Man, that's that's tough, man. That just that just won't do it. And it begs the question on if James Harden is actually this washed or whatever. I mean, it's it's going to beg the question. I know they haven't had a full season and B was a little banged up and stuff. So you definitely want to still like put some pieces and something together because you can't bring that same team, you know, some player for player back. You got to get better somewhere. So we'll see what the Sixers do. Um, we will see what the Sixers do. Uh, as far as um, B goes, he scored 20 points. 12 rebounds and some of you would probably say okay we got a double double yeah but he also uh shot seven for 24 including going two for eight from three two for eight from behind the arc so for that's like 29 and 25 percent for the ones who care and for the ones who are saying man that's a lot of bricks 
I mean, yeah, it's just, you know what I'm saying? He, in his defense, you know what I'm saying? He did have, uh, you know what I'm saying, that, that orbital bone that he was dealing with. And he did come back to help the Sixers win two games. So, you know, that's another thing that begs the question, what if? What if Embiid was healthy? I'm going to touch on something that Embiid said later on uh, here coming up in a few seconds. But uh, also, the thing about Miami, injury or not, you can't come in to a series against Miami hurt anyway because they're a scrappy team with a tactician as a coach. And regardless of anyone's overall individual skill set, they're a team regardless. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you got a team of players regardless. So, you know what I'm saying? That just a team is always going to overcome one or two players. That's the whole point of a team. But uh, for Miami, Bam out of bio went perfect from the field, five for five, but he still went perfect, you know? Uh, also, Max Struess. I will like to highlight Struess right here because, first of all, I know it had to be tough to take Duncan Robinson and put him on the bench for Max Struess. And I hope I'm saying his last name right, too. Um, but Struess has really been very productive overall from me watching him. I didn't watch uh, a whole lot of Miami basketball this year just because. But, you know, at the same time, um, the games that I did catch him and then when they played the Hawks in this uh, last playoff series, it was just he would come out of nowhere opportune times and just knock down shots. And it drove me crazy because, like, they had, like, they wasn't guarding him like that. They had, like, he was saying, okay, bro, go ahead and shoot. We're not worried about it. We're not studying it. We'll live. And, and, and that wasn't the case. But Struess, he had 20 points and shot 40% from three. That'll do it. That'll do it. While Jimmy Butler dropped 32 points, eight rebounds, and shot 44% from the field, including uh, that three in the corner on James Harden. Yeah, that was, that, that was a nice shot for Jimmy. I get it to him. Uh, Jimmy also had kind words for his former teammate, Joel Embiid, said I was going to touch on that. Uh, he basically said that uh, he wished he still played with Embiid, wished they were still teammates, but immediately expressed his love and affection for Miami, as he should. Um, but we all know the situation with how things went down in Philly with Jimmy in the organization. I don't have to touch on that right now, but still. And Embiid, they asked Embiid um, his thoughts about the series, and he was basically saying, uh, you never know what could have happened. And that's basically what I was saying too early. You never know what could have happened because if Embiid was healthy, you know, Embiid with a fractured orbital bone came back and still helped the Sixers get two wins. So healthy MB, you know what I'm saying? Uh, his, if his face was okay, even if he did have the ligament in his thumb, he probably still would have been okay. You know, it still would have been okay. But um, once again, Miami, scrappy team. And you know what I'm saying? Sixers just on the wrong side of fate, really. But Miami, congratulations. They advanced to the ECF for the second time in three years. Also, Miami is waiting on the winner of Milwaukee and Boston, and I'm waiting to see what that game is going to hold as well. Next up here, we have the Suns and Mavs game six. Man, this the Suns were completely dismantled in game six, okay? Completely. Uh, they lost every quarter. They didn't win a quarter at all. Uh, <laughs> shoot. Um, the Suns, they did win the rebound and points in the paint battle. And even the second chance points too, which should be a concern coming into game seven for um, 
for the Mavs, but I'll touch on that uh, in a minute. Uh, unfortunately, the Suns had 22 turnovers, and that just won't get it done. 22 turnovers in one game. Okay, that's crazy. Uh, and especially when the Mavs have 21 fast break points off of those turnovers. <laughs> then you go ahead and um, you go ahead and also put that the Mavs had, uh, I believe it was a 13 point advantage on steals. Yeah, 16 to three on steals. One team has 16 steals on you to your only your three. That's just not going to get it done, especially with a team with championship aspirations. Um, as far as like uh, coming down to like some stats and everything, Chris Paul has been um, a little different. We'll, to, we'll say that a little different since his game three performance. Uh, he did shoot 57% from the field, including going three or five from three, but uh, still four rebounds. No, no, excuse me, four assists, uh, two rebounds, and 13 points overall is not going to, it's going to give you more harm than help, you know? And then D book, he had a weird game. Uh, six of six of 17 uh from the field goose egg from three zero by the way he didn't score in the second quarter at all he didn't score and then he had um had the deals going because he went three for ten in the second half resulting in only 19 points sons fans i'm gonna tell you deandre ayton cannot be your leading score when you have book and the point guard uh, on, 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 I mean, on the floor, they call Chris Paul the point guard for a reason. And I mean, book, he, he, he can play, man. He can shoot that basketball. He really can. But last night they both had off games. I said, Aiden had 21, I believe. And, um, he can't be the leading scorer, not with them two on the floor and healthy. Like the last time Chris Paul had a performance like this was when he was hurt. Um, I mean, he had got hurt against the Lakers last year or something like that. And he was kind of, kind of laboring like the whole playoffs and stuff. So I hope, uh, that he's not hurt. I really don't want Chris Paul to get hurt because it seems like he always gets real close. And then all of a sudden the injury comes up and I, I really hate that for him. And I really hope that he's not dealing with nothing internal and just not telling anyone I really hope that he's healthy and I really hope no matter what the playoff situation happens that he continues to be healthy and goes forward. Um, I know the whole Suns team was horrible and they seemed like they were out of sync everywhere, offense, defense, just everywhere. They seemed like they were just out of sync all night. And uh, Dallas, however, came out with that talk that ish now attitude um you know they it was a little scuffle or whatever at the end of uh game five so they came out ready to play and um dallas had four guys in double figures yeah four guys in double figures to phoenix's three then also the mavs had six players to shoot over 40 percent from the field spencer dinwoody was five out of seven from the three-point line that's 71 percent and then you had Magic Man Luca, who almost notched a triple double. He had 33, 8, and 11. So, game seven, I'm looking forward to it. Sunday is going to be great. This is Chris Paul's eighth game seven, I believe, uh, with his fourth franchise. Because, you know, he had the Clippers, he had the Hornets, he had uh, OKC, that game that they lost against uh, Houston. So you have that going on. And then you also have Luca and the Mavs, their second game seven after losing to the Clippers last year. Um, Luca had a stellar game, but it just wasn't enough. So with both these guys coming off of game seven losses, pretty much I expect to see the best version of Luca and the Mavs. And I expect to see the best version of the of, uh, Chris Paul and the Suns. It's going to be a great matchup. Can't wait for it. 
Um, but pretty much this is going to end my quick little segment here about the results of last night's NBA playoffs. I will be back with more videos and stuff. Um, stay tuned. Plan on to discuss the NFL schedule that was released last night. Uh, so stay tuned for that and also more content and everything that I have coming up. Uh, always remember anything that's in your mind that's positive, you can do it. And remember, positive energy always creates elevation. And that's how you get your peace. You can do whatever you want to do, whatever you put your mind to. All you got to do, just hop off the porch. All right. Y'all have a great one. Deuces, trays, peace and blessings. A1 forever. Let's be generational. It's okay. It's okay.